Hello everyone, welcome back. So today I have final, well not today, the past couple days, I've been testing the DYS ARIA ESCs because this is our ESC testing quad now for the channel. So I didn't know what to expect. I didn't add the lower ESR capacitor. We've done noise testing on the bench. They seemed, they do have a little bit of noise, but they seemed like they were holding the phases very well, especially on the default 24 kilohertz. Now, if you're new to the channel, and, and I'm just gonna quickly just go briefly over this. Uh, BLHeli32 has a setting called PWM frequency. Default, usually it runs 24 on 24. Uh, most of them you can max out to 48 kilohertz. Now, once you max that out, um, it, the, the ESCs tend to run a lot cleaner and a lot smoother. However, some people report issues on such high frequency. So people will start dropping it down. Some report very good results on 32 kilohertz, but on default it's 24 kilohertz. And if you go anything below, the lower you go, the noisier it gets. So that's something that a lot of people should actually just start knowing by now. And it's very good to know this point. Now, uh, let's talk about the testing here. I left everything default. I left this on 24 kilohertz, which is default. I have not maxed it out. Um, I'm running DSHOT 1200. I'm using the new Skyzone F4 flight controller. I'm actually loving this guy, guys, to be honest. Um, he's absolutely phenomenal so far. So I'm not gonna do my review on him, the real world review just yet. Until we test some with some more ESCs, then we could see how good this guy really is. But so far, I'm very impressed. I'm very happy with it. Um, so let's talk about the ESCs because this whole thing is about the ESCs right now. Uh, so from the testing, we actually saw that they do have a bit of noise. It was nothing spectacular. It was nothing like super crazy out of the ordinary. Uh, just just a very good, you know, ESC. That's how they tested. And um, so we were all waiting, and I was waiting myself for to actually get this tested in the real world. And I took it out. And to, I was, to be honest, I was surprised. Now, just a couple of things to note. The VTX, this is a cheap VTX. There is no filtration in it. There is no low ESR capacitor. I did not add low ESR capacitor. I left it default, nothing. And the VTX is taking, it's not even taking from a voltage regulator. It's taking the direct feed from the battery, which gives you the highest probability of a lot of noise on a crappy setup or a crappy or noisy setup. Sorry, not crappy, noisy setup. However, uh, it did have a little bit of noise, but actually like, it's super flyable, and you don't. I don't even think you need a thousand microfarad low ESR capacitor. Maybe like one three thirty or one four seventy microfarad would clean it out. It was just, I was impressed. I was. I did not expect this. I was like, I'm not even gonna get to fly this. I'm probably gonna fly it for over for thirty seconds, and not be able to see in front of me, or try to fly it and then just land it and come back, and then we're gonna add the low ESR and do another test and then come back to the channel. But if I add low ESR capacitor, this is absolute perfect feed. And this is direct feed coming from the battery. And we have it set up on Emacs 2205S motors, which are, don't worry about that noise because the prop is off. Uh, Emacs 2205S motors because they do have strong magnets. And usually from my testing, I see motors with strong magnets tend to have more noise. So it passed with flying colors. Um, I'm going to show you the footage right now. Let's take a look at it together. All right. Everything and I left the throttle on the left for this quads OSD so we can see at what throttle percentage we do get noise and that was just a full punch out where you can kind of see the noise um, when it's looking up in the sky but overall it's 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 very I think consider this almost perfect uh, it's not perfect there's a little bit of tiny noise but it will not affect or hinder your flying experience at all unless you're a super picky guy but you will still be able to see your gaps and go through them and that's what I was trying to test here I was totally fine with this but I will add low ESR capacitor to give make it absolutely perfect feed um, I am very impressed I am very satisfied and to be honest from so far I've put <laughs> 15, 16 lipos in this guy, still running strong, still running good. I even tested 5S on this. It was insane. It was ridiculous. So it was very good. Um, as you can see, full power out. Everything's fine. You can see on those just those hard pushes, like when I do a quick stop, you can see that noise rush in. But, you know, we could even possibly clean that out with just increasing the PWM frequency to 48 kilohertz and seeing how that will do. That would be pretty interesting, actually. I should have thought of that uh, when I was in the field. But... Overall, uh, this is this is a pass for me. Um, so far, I, I really do like this, and um, I'm very impressed. Uh, that's all I could say right now. There's no voltage regulator on that VTX. There's no low ESR capacitor on that VTX. There's nothing. It's just 
just direct and I, you know in, in this day and age to have something like this i think it's, it's actually a miracle to be honest um so well um so yeah well you guys just saw it so it's it's very good um that's all I could say, and then that's all. I'm just showing you what I got and what I found, and you know the end result. It's your decision, but from my personal experience, I would definitely recommend these. Uh, so far, 5s flew absolutely beautiful. No desyncs, no problems. Diatona had desyncs, uh, 5s. I've had other desyncs with the 5s. This one actually held it very well, and I'll show you that video also, uh, possibly at the end of this video. So. Overall, in conclusion, what do I think of these ESCs? Um, I think if you purchase them, you actually got yourself a very good, good ESC. So if you had like a Matic F4, you know, one of those sensitive gyros, like the Matic F405, maybe even one of the, I know the race flights are having the same issue as the Matic right now because of their gyros. And But they're saying it's not the gyros, it's just noisy ESCs or some bug in BL Hell ES. Anyways, that's not the point. However, uh, this should not create problems with that, those kind of flight controllers because it seems like it's running in phase and very clean so i'm very impressed i'm very satisfied um, i'm very happy for these and um this was a good buy and uh, anyone who has them please let us know how your experience went for you because overall guys you know heat sink led I mean, who cares about the led you got current sensing we have telemetry next step is telemetry uh they run clean they're pretty cheap they're like 15 bucks right now i think each and you can probably get four for 60 bucks or something or maybe even less i'm not sure um i mean not a single problem i built it put it on the ground and flew it flew it I, just all i did was just to change the rates and uh, fix this to 90 degree yaw because it wouldn't fly because uh, it turns out that i had the board actually the board actually comes the weird you have to set a 90 degree yaw offset for some reason when you put it correct anyways but that, who cares uh, but overall, basically, after doing that for the flight controller, just put it on the floor and just went flying. I didn't have to do anything. No, nothing. It was just, that's it. Just plug in that battery and go fly. And it flew and it kept flying. And I really did love it. Pretty efficient. Uh, pretty clean. No weird anything. And I'm very satisfied. I'm very pleased with this setup. Uh, both the flight controller and the ESCs here are very, very good so far from this testing. Um, however, don't forget, you can't take into consideration how good the flight controller is just yet because these were good ESCs. So once we put bad ESCs, then we can really go into more detail, and that's why I'm not making the full review for this just yet. But the ESCs here, um, two thumbs up, no doubt. Uh, I'm, I'm super confident in that. And um, I'm sure, I'm sure, hopefully, we have people who've tested them and will leave comments down below and let us know how that went for them. Because overall, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with it. It came out very well. Uh, so it's a 35 amp ESC and rocking BL Heli 32. It's a 3 to 6 S LiPo. I tested 5S on it so far. And I think I tested the high volt. Oh, no, no, high volt. I tested on a different quad. But uh, 5S flew absolutely beautiful. No desyncs, no nothing. It, it flew like a 2306 motor on a high volt battery with 2205 motors. And be and, and actually, it was pretty efficient, to be honest. So that was pretty sweet. So to be, and, and by the way, this frame flew very nice for some reason. It was super smooth. It was super controllable. I could go through these little, you know, like half a meter posts. And it was, it was, it was good. I just... I, I, I just don't know what to say, I just enjoyed it so much. Anyways, I need to stop blabbering here. Uh, the ESCs were good, I do recommend them. Uh, they passed with flying colors, and um, to be honest, I really don't want to keep this as my ESC testing quad anymore because it flies so good. I actually just want to keep it on the side and fly when I want to, but no, I have to because if every time I build a nice one I want to keep on the side, I'll never even build a tester. So this was a good setup, obviously. So we know the motors are working, we know the flight controller is working, the VTX is working without a problem, the camera is working without a problem. So everything is working just as planned. Now, you know, just to change one component would be the smart thing to do, plus this thing looks like it's, it could take a beating. It's pretty big tank here and uh, it kind of did and you don't even see that it did so that's pretty sweet and um well that's gonna conclude it for this video guys so these dys aria 32-bit escs are very good it's a big improvement than their crap 4-in-1 escs and i do apologize for the people that like those escs but in my opinion in my experience and the people i've talked to we all had bad experiences i've thrown two in the trash because they didn't work so let me just actually quickly show you. I didn't. You guys saw this build. We we built this on the channel. I did not add a low ESR. So I, I left it with no low ESR. I think I think that's the right way. The right way to test it right now. But I should imp 
improvise or make some kind of mechanism to allow me to switch on a 1000 uh, microfarad low ESR capacitor Panasonic. So that'll be pretty good. I mean, it'll reduce its low ESR, but at the same time, you know, it gives us some kind of um, idea of what will happen if we put a full-fledged low ESR capacitor with any ESC really on this quad. So overall, I'm pleased with everything here. Um, the testing was absolutely phenomenal. Um, and um, yeah, that's all I can really say right now, guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And if I did help you out there, it wouldn't hurt to use my links down below. It would really help the channel. And um, you guys could always, you know, be an awesome supporter of my Patreon. If you can, be super awesome. If not, just leave a comment. And that's concluded for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.